All right, we're back. We're now going from 20 to 11. Um, uh, there's still... This is... I don't know why I'm explaining this. It's the same video, but 20 to 11 now. Uh, there was a little gap in the threads, and as I said before, it's going to be a fucking long one, so we're not even halfway there yet. <laughs> Whoa. Someone says... There was plenty of ahem lively debate when we revealed which EastEnders characters made numbers 35 to 21. And respecting plenty of more, same for the numbers of 20 to 11. Two words, Mick Carter. <laughs> After we, as we celebrate 35 years of Wolford Woe, which EastEnders characters made the top 20? Brace yourselves, people. This could get ugly. As we go straight into number 20, which is Arthur Fowler. Played by Bill Treacher from 1985 to 96. I... Yes. I'm fine with this. Um... Arthur... Is... I love him so much, but he's not... He's... Arthur existed so Frank fucking Butcher could fucking walk, you know. Arthur is fucking useless. But he's really charming whilst being useless. Like, <laughs> I don't understand. This old character's like, he's shit. But I love him so much. Um, famously, we'll reference this video any chance we get. Obviously, someone shit on Arthur's bench. <laughs> I don't know why. That's how much of my legacy Arthur Fowler left. Yeah, he left uh, a fucking bench. Which is still funny at this point. Who, who, who wants a bench? <laughs> Who wants and then a I'll, bench? And then obviously How about he's a tombstone? How about that? I don't want a fucking bench. <laughs> Fuck off. <laughs> like I love, I love, I love like dark. Yeah, you get a big send off. You know, you get a big send off. You know, but, but, but we have everything planned for you. you you're going, we're going to give you a whole episode. So, uh, Arthur, um, Arthur, uh, what are you, what are we giving Arthur? Give him a bench. Give him a <laughs> fucking bench, lads. Give him a bench. <laughs> yeah. Like a little, um, a little the fame, most famous stuff is obviously after he cheats on Pauline, he gets a frying pan to the head. <laughs> yeah, I love that. Um, Pauline, listen. Donk. <laughs> <laughs> and obviously, he also had some scenes where you slowly see his like mental health get worse. And he has a nervous breakdown, which is pretty... He's pretty fucking harrowing to see even now. Um... I, I just I just love him, honestly. He's just... He's so good, despite doing nothing. And I don't think people understand how... Like, because he was always commenting on shit, but he never really had that much input. Like, ah, it's just, he's just so good. Uh, the comment says, Nick Barry may believe that every loser wins, but poor Arthur would beg to differ. Although he was devoted to his wife Pauline, it's no wonder that this descent and proud man loved his allotment so much. As nobody could think straight in the chaos of the 45 Albert Square. When the long-term unemployed Arthur stole the Christmas club money in desperation to pay for my daughter Michelle's wedding, led to a nervous breakdown on scenes which are still shocking and harrowing now. Even, even more gallingly, the wedding didn't even go ahead as Michelle jol jilted Lofty at the altar. Ah. Good old Michelle Fowler. Yeah, so I'll take Arthur being 20. He he deserves his place, for sure. I'll say that much. What are we going to leave Arthur this time? A fucking, a fucking walking stick? You know, for reaching number 20, you get a walking stick, Arthur. In your name. Number uh, 19. Oh. I was just going to quickly say, love Arthur Fowler. Why was he given a bench? <laughs> like, all the characters have been given trees. Oh yeah, Arthur, what? I gotta sit my sweaty ass on you. Ooh, rub that in. What do you think of that, Arthur? I'm yeah. sure it's something funny is that he did just sit in his ass all day and do nothing, so. <laughs> Probably True. deserved that bench. <laughs> Number True. 19 is Tiffany Mitchell. Um, obviously married to Grant um, and was Bianca's like, best friend. I would play a Martine McCutcheon from 95 to 99. Um, Tiffany, I've not once seen. I've not seen that much, but um, ultimately, she was a part of the famous storyline where, by a by a by a baby monitor, it's revealed that Grant slept with her mum. 
<laughs> well, they, they had they had an affair, and it was revealed. I'm pretty sure it was revealed in front of the pub. Um, I could be mixing up with the uh, Grant and or the Phil and Sharon one, but you know that was the more famous one. Um, and obviously she died in '99. She was hit by a car by Frank after her and uh, Grant were having a fu- uh, a fight, as expected, because it's Grant. Um, and yeah. Since she says, the comment says, Walford's answer to Lady Die, kind heart Tiffany was massively popular heroine in the 90s, cheerful barmaid whose smile could light up a room, friendship with, with Bianca epitomized girl power, but her involvement with Grant proved to be a downfall. Yes, there was baby Courtney, named after Courtney Love, but there was also brutality and betrayal. Her discovery via baby monitor that Grant slept with her mum has been ripped off by Soapman ever since, and her death after being hit by a car was poignant and truly memorable. You could say it was a perfect moment. I just wanted to make the obvious joke there. It's funny how they say she was like Princess Diana and they both died by car. Of course, one of them was murdered, but the other one was just hit, hit, hit and run. But still, Tiffany... Uh, <clears throat> oh, my voice is getting raspy now, the cranks. Um, Tiffany was, of course... She was... Um, I haven't seen much of Tiffany. I think she was the one storyline that we covered before where she was supposed to get raped by Grant... <laughs> And then on basically, Christmas on Christmas Day, and Russ Kempman, if you fuckers make me do this, I will walk. I yes. will walk, and I will never come back. And like, Jesus, Ross, we only want you to rape her. We didn't want you to kill her. Like, calm on down. On Christmas Day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, on Christmas, like, like, Santa Claus comes down the chimney. You're coming on her without consent. And it's like, uh, gosh, I will walk. <laughs> like, that's, the, that's the only thing I know about Tiffany is the fact that Grant nearly walked. That are not a grand to Ross Kemp nearly well. Love that. Love an actor stick up from themselves and like, you know, oh, murderer yeah. would, is would fine. have done like irre- irreplaceable damage on fucking on the character of Grant. Um, yeah, but Tiffany was cool. She's she's she she's one of the sweethearts. I feel like she's often brought up along like Michelle Fowler with like the characters who are just loved, and you don't really get a lot of them. So. Respect goes to it. And she was only there for four years, so it's a lot of impact to make in a short period of time. Number 18, Max Branning. Whoa. Oh. What are you doing this to us for, lads? I swear, He's Danny Dyer higher, higher than that. Again. Um, no, I'm Fucking sad about hell. this one. I'm sad. Go on. Why has my ginger bald friend been shafted here? He's been shafted at number 18. Um, press F in the chat. He has been... They, they they killed my boy. They killed him. They killed me boy. Um, so, yeah. Why why is why is Max number 18? He's a great character. He's a great addition to the show. Shame he left in 2021, but maybe... Everybody did. Maybe... <laughs> But maybe, oh no, maybe, maybe next year I'll give it to someone special. Like maybe next year, Max Brenning will return. I I really hope we are setting up for a Max return, because a character who I didn't appreciate whilst he was still there, but understandably he was being written like shit. Like, it's just like, oh, who's Max now? Oh, he's just a grumpy fucking uncle now. Like that's all he does. His family's dead. He's not sleeping with anyone. Like. You know, you don't need that. We need... Max is a shagger. He's always been a shagger, and he's forever going to be a shagger. We need Max, like, fucking... I don't know, he just needs a purpose, and he didn't have a purpose whilst he was there. So, probably fair enough to put him lower down on the list, but with the the recency bias gone, he's up there. Like, he's... He had so many good storylines. It's just... Yeah, the last couple years of him being there before he left weren't the best. But I miss him. I love him. He did be higher now. Because uh, he's been involved in a lot of really good stuff over the years. Um, Enders has always had a sleazy side. And nobody symbolized that more than Max. Walford's women are powerless to resist his signature scent of oh to regret. And we can kind of see why. The very definition of so wrong it's right. Max's inability to keep it in his pants has always been his downfall. His weaknesses have seen him lose his family and end up wrongfully imprisoned. Yeah, like he was wrongfully imprisoned for, for Lucy's murder for a year, which was good fun. 
Um, but the square would be a much less colourful place for that. It's Hangdog Expression. He does he does play Sad Max very well. Like Sad Max, his face buckles me always. So I would put him higher personally. I think he's done a lot more on the show. Um, but I mean, considering Ronnie's already done, Stacey's already done, Frank's already done, Ian's gone. Like, I don't know about that, Chief. Number 17, Cindy Beale. Oh. Oh. Oh, oh. And now oh. that your rose is in bloom, a lie hits the gloom on the grey. A uh, comment says, a relationship with Ian Beale can do... Uh, this was Michelle Collins played from 88 to 1990 and then came back in 92 to 98 and obviously came back this year, um, which obviously didn't happen at the time. A relationship with Ian Beale can do strange things to a woman. In Vampish Cindy's case, it sent into the arms of both Ian's half-brother Simon and then Simon's half-brother David. Don't ever try to untangle Wolford's family tree. In the end, Peroxide Piranha Cindy hired a hitman to finish off Ian. The murder attempt failed. She's fled with the kids and ended up going down for efforts. An off-screen death in prison means that Cindy remains top of the fans back from the dead wish list. Fucking hell, right? A fair play. You know, that's a good one, that. Uh, I agree. Um, at the time, she deserved this spot. I don't know if she'd be higher now considering her run back. Um... Not yet. She, we haven't seen. Give her like a good two more years. She'd be much higher because we haven't had, we haven't really seen the big payoff to a lot of her storylines yet. Um, one thing I just I never mentioned it to Ash. But one, there's an edit I love where it's the anti-hero, but a but a certain person that I like, and I really want to do that with Cindy Beal, where it's her going, Bobby, you should have died in the fire. That it's it's hi, it's me. It's the problem, it's me. Hi, it's me. I'm the problem, it's me. I don't know why. I just want, I just want to fucking want the anti-hero over that clip. And then do a sexy edit of Cindy. But yeah, um, I, I, I don't mind Cindy. I hate the character. Again, I'll have to stress this. I hate the character. I don't hate the actress. That's yeah. my problem with most characters. Michelle I hate Collins the, the character. does a fantastic job of just being a massive bitch. But it's not it's not in the way where you're like, I don't want to see you. You go, you fucking piece of shit. Fuck you. And it's like, yeah, it's working. It's working, boys. She's not likable. She's a massive bitch. That's the whole point. And I love it. It's so good. Just like having Ian be back and being the weasel. Like, ah, oh, she's got they're perfect for each other. But they they don't you know, they don't it's so good. Cindy, I never knew before now, but with at this point, I'd happily go back and watch some of old Cindy just like fucking about and just, oh, you didn't give me attention. Well, I've shagged your brother. <laughs> what? Oh, yeah, and I've shagged your brother too. What? <laughs> Why? Didn't give me attention, did you? Fucking loser. <laughs> you snooze, you lose, bitch. <laughs> like, it's just... Oh, it's gold. Every, every show needs a massive bitch, and Cindy is one of the more iconic ones. Number 16, Dan Sullivan. Uh, all right, so I doubt you know anything about this. He was there from 1999 to 2001. I played by Craig Fairba Fairbrass. Dan Sullivan is probably the only man to actually fucking fuck over Phil and get away with it. Um, it like, he was a very hard man, um, but he was also very charming. Uh, he apparently cheated his way into owning half the Vic. Um, he seduced Mel, made an enemy of Steve Owen, destroyed Ricky and Bianca's marriage, and broke Carol's heart. Like, he genuinely, he was there for two years and fucked everyone. <laughs> like, he fucked everybody over. Um, and that's why everybody kind of remembers him so fondly, because he came in, beat Phil, ruined people's marriages, like, entered like a big part of the show and then fucked off and got away with it so it, that's why he's remembered so well because he got to do all that got away scot-free perfectly fine i'm just gonna ask you because i'm i i'm gonna have no opinion on this do you think reckon he should be this high oh no not at all <laughs> no no way he deserves to be this high there's okay. so much there's so many better characters that deserve to be 
in this spot were not Dan Sullivan, who was a very my. He was a big character in the two years he was there, but just because he got away with it, like, you know, he. That's why he's seen as this like big figure because he was. He, oh hello. Come on, camera. There we go. Oh, fucking hell. There we are. Um. But it was just because he managed to do all this and leave. But if he stayed, he would have been a lot less remembered. See, you know what's funny? The minute you went down, I'm gonna, my mind instantly went, it's Severin. It's fucking Severin. <laughs> I was like, what's Dan Emma, Severin on? Emma's on this list. Dan, 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 Dan. <laughs> fucking just walks out with all the belts. <laughs> um... What does the description read? Or have you read it? Uh, it says, the charismatic man mountain caused trail devastation during his two years on the square. Did it all with a smile. Possibly the only hard man to ever beat Phil at his own game. Cheated his way into owning 50% of the Vic, causing Frank and Peggy to have an attack of the vapors. He seduced Mel, made an enemy of Steve Owen, destroyed Ricky and Bianca's marriage, and broke Carol's heart. A solid gold East Enders villain. Fair enough. Yeah, I, I haven't watched any of them either, so. Number 15, Grant Mitchell. Oh. How are we getting in? Who's going to be in the tents? Fuck. It's like... going to be fucking Saeed, name that. <laughs> so, uh, what the fuck's their names? Uh, you stupid woman. You stupid woman. Ali, fucking... Ali and Sue. Yeah, Ali and Sue. <laughs> Tony like, Carpenter. It has to Kevin be. Carpenter. Peggy's got to be up there. Phil's yeah. got to be up there. Pat is got to be there. Dan. Uh, Dot's got to be there. Den's got to be there. Probably Angie. Sharon, like, ah, uh, fucking hell, that's probably Cat. I don't know if I said it, but yeah. Um, all right, fifteen though. Grant Mitchell. Grant deserves this place to be here. Honestly, he, despite he was he was there for a decent chunk of time during his initial stint, but only came back for like a year max at the other time. time. So he was there from nineteen ninety to ninety nine. Obviously ushered in the new era of the show, the more hard man crime kind of driven aspect. Not that it wasn't addressed before, like you obviously had like the fucking neo Nazi group, you had you had drugs, you had prostitution, you had like pretty hard shit going on. But obviously in ninety three Well what, wait, was he in ninety? Well, whenever the Mitchells were introduced, right, it was the change. It was now gangsters and shit. Um but you know, people loved, um, people loved Grant because yes, he would like fucking punch people and like fucking do this. He was also very emotional, you know. Phil kind of keeps it all like fucking bottled and has a big outburst, but you know, Grant was a lot more emotional. And he struggled, right? Most of the women who got with him thought they could fix him, they could change him. You know, he still still hit women, still fucking had volatile, angry relationships. Like, you know, it's 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 the reason why people love Grant is because there was a lot more layers to it than, uh, like, you know, he's just an angry man who fucking shouts at people. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah, he deserves to be up here. Um, I'll say that much. Um, do you, do you have much to say about Grant? Uh, love, I haven't seen much of Grant. I've seen the one where he's in the fucking Italy with Phil and like they start a fight with Italy, with Italy, with an Italy gang. Um, I've seen the clip where they crash the car into the river. Fucking love that clip. Yes. <laughs> it's fucking obviously Sharon it. Gate as well. Fucking. No fan, no fan. And I've seen well, it's if I seen of Grant. I fucking seen the one in the seen, woods. Seen him and Phil dancing. <laughs> Whoa. Kung fu fighting. <laughs> I've seen, I've seen the. I've, I've seen the one where he gets outraged at Phil for fucking for not telling him about Peggy's dead. And he's like, "Fuck you, I'm leaving again," and then he left. I was, and that's pretty much much of much of I've seen of him. I've seen a video where it was like Frank Butcher versus Phil and Grant, and that's where I see most of Grant's clips. Yeah. But yeah, yeah I do love Grant. I do, but the only reason I love Grant is because I hate Ross Kemp because Ross Kemp is like oh, the hardest man in Britain. Why? I played the hardest man on the square. It's like, 
<laughs> it's like Ross Kemp believes he's Grant Mitchell, but he's not Grant Mitchell. He's fucking he, yes. he's the dog of Grant Mitchell. He, like, he's the fucking pet, the, the little chihuahua that Grant owned. Like that makes sense. It, like it, does yeah. that, like like no, I, I just get that. I get that. like it's just Ross Kemp believes he's Grant, and Grant just believes he's Grant. Like it's it's like there's no barrier between them. That's why I love Grant. It's because Ross Kemp is so full that he believes he's actually Grant. That's why I love it. But um, Ross Kemp himself, <laughs> shit actor. He's a oh, shit yeah. actor. <laughs> I'm the hardest man in Britain. I talk on. I I take on these guys with guns, and I tell them that there's another way you can do this. I talk them out of shooting me by talking to them. And I'm like, jeez, if you were actually this tough, Ross Kemp, you'd yeah, be shot. I mean, obviously at this <laughs> point, he's most known for his documentaries, right? Most <laughs> yeah, he's known for. It goes um, documentaries and then Grant and yeah. then himself. And it says, one of the characters that defined the 90s, Grant was a volatile individual whose service in the Falklands had left its scars. Um, impulsive and keen to live up to the Mitchell name, his punch-first, flank-later approach caused all kinds of aggro. Despite his brutish ways, he could be very emotional, and several women thought they would be the one to finally fix him. His sibling rivalry with Phil peaked during the epic Sharon Gate saga when Grant played a tape of his wife. Sharon discussed her infidelity with Phil to a packed Queen Vic. Grant gl- glowering at the pair while a single tear rolls down his cheeks, just as gripping now as it was 25 years ago. Yeah, it's fair enough. I, yeah, I still have more people higher on this fucking list, but we're now getting to the proper fucking ones. As what's number 14, Pauline Fowler. Okay. Fair enough. Um. <laughs> yeah. Pauline is such a tragic character. Because her life just went from shit to shit. <laughs> like, she never had it easy. At all. If Lou Beale was the start, Pauline was the fucking end. To where it's like, oh, what's going to happen? Mark's gone. Sound. Ah, oh, Michelle's, fa- Michelle's pregnant with Den's baby. Sound. Or oh, Mark's got HIV. During peak AIDS crisis. Sound. Martin's killed a man, he's gone to prison. Sound. Oh, he's with Sonia, who's fucking useless. Sound. Oh, I'm dead. <laughs> like, fuck. Oh, All while he... continually being working at the laundrette for shit, babe. <laughs> Obviously, I know Pauline for the infamous clip with Arthur. We mentioned it earlier. And um, classic EastEnders. Do you know, like, um, I don't know if you have it, but do you know, like, where you have a parent... Who like brings up the fact that when the fairy tale of New York plays, they bring up the fact that this singer died in a jet ski accident. That's my dad every Christmas for East Enders. Did you know Pauline died under a tree, a Christmas yes. tree? And I'm like, yeah, uh, did he? Did she? He's like, yes, she did. I'll show you the clip every fucking year. Every year, he's like, did you know? Pa-? Like whenever I'm watching East Enders, he's like, did you know Pauline died under a Christmas tree? I'm like, yes, I know. You told me last year. You told me last year. <laughs> it's like there was a comment where someone someone suggested a cool video idea, but I'm not sure we do it. Uh, someone suggested we do a video where we kind of we somehow look back about 20 years and we figure out what people were thinking about the show then. Which is a cool fucking idea, but I've no idea how we'd actually do it. Like uh, the Internet Archive, probably with a fucking yeah. Like board. we'd have to find a bunch of message boards and like forum posts, but it's a cool idea. But I'm not sure how we do it. Um, but but yeah, like Pauline, I love Pauline. Um, she definitely deserves this spot. Yeah, I think, on the list. Um, and fucking just Lou Beal 2.0, right? Like it's perfect. That's who she was supposed to be. And she did it really well. Like, she would fucking yell at everyone and anyone. And, ah, it's just gold. And the description says, if you look up the phrase long-suffering, there's a picture of Pauline Fowler pursing her lips. Life was one long slog for Pauline. Started off as a warm, loyal, and doting mother. Relentless drudgery and a series of tragedies, meaning that she ended her days as a poisonous, smothering battle axe. But along the way, the original Walford matriarch embodied East Enders and went through some huge challenges, including a baby in middle age, coping with, with daughter Michelle's teenage pregnancy, coming to terms with his son's uh, son Mark's HIV diagnosis, and all while keeping that fruit bowl stuff. Yeah, Pauline didn't have an easy life. She deserves to be here for sure. All right, number yeah. 13. Ooh. 
Mel Owen. Oh. Oh. You know what? Fair enough. Fair enough. Her recent stint together. Her Her recent recent stint. Mm. Her recent stint at the time gave her this... uh, Give her this nomination, nomination, fuck it, whatever you want to say. Placement. This award placement. Um, fair enough. I do agree. I do enjoy Melon. Yeah. I haven't seen much of Melon. I only watch clips of her. I did watch some of this show when she was on it. Um, do love the uh, fucking. I'll see you, Sharon. Boom! <clears throat> hit by a truck. Apparently hit by a truck. She could have moved away. We don't know. We don't yeah, know. Mel. Mel was like a firecracker in like nineteen eight two thousand two. You know, had all the big formative storylines, the stuff with Steve Owen, the stuff with Phil. Um, uh, had 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 the, had the like the shortest fucking marriage to Ian. When Ian said that Lucy had cancer, but she didn't, <laughs> and he just wanted to marry her, and he thought it would fix everything, but it definitely didn't. She never loved him, and then a recent stint made her. She earned that fucking spot because she carried the show in a pretty rough time. Um, and yeah, I'll go. I'll give it. To, I fair enough. Probably not over a lot of the other more famous people for the show, like not over fucking Frank or Ronnie or Stacy. But with the recency bias in mind, probably earn it. Uh, yeah, because yeah, sorry to just interrupt you. But she definitely deserves this spot because she carried the show, let's admit it. And also, Mel Owen is just a fantastic character, I think, in my opinion. Yeah. And then, like, having to lose her uh, husband and then son. I think Hunter, 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 Hunter shot himself, I think. On he the didn't square. shot himself, but he was involved in a siege at the Queen Vic and got shot by Palm Police. Yeah, yeah, sorry, sorry. I thought he shot himself. And basically, she had to deal with that, and then I believe didn't Hunter kill uh, Steve Owen? Uh, he didn't kill Steve Owen. He killed her husband at the time, Ray Kelly. Oh, Ray Kelly, sorry. Yeah, Steve oh, Owen Jesus. died like 20 years ago. Oh, Jesus. I don't, you don't want to shorten Ray Kelly, do you? Jesus. Um, I'll let you think of that one. Shorten Ray Kelly, what do you get? Yeah. Okay, fine. <laughs> he, got he got it. He it. I think he got it. I'll blame the autism on that. One. <laughs> um, but yeah, um, but yeah, she's a good character. <laughs> she's a good character, and yeah, I got my Mel. I love Mel. <laughs> I just, I'm sorry. I just love it. Like, don't shorten Ray Kelly. That's just how. Like, hmm. Philosophy is a great thing when you look at it, isn't it? <laughs> like just I, like really like like a teacher going. So what's one plus one, Ash? Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> like just sat there. Uh, sorry, I just had to point that out. Loved it. <laughs> <laughs> Love you, man. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'll, I'll read the little thing. But yeah, I Mel carried the show at a rough time, and I'll give a lot of actors like credit for that because it's not fucking easy. All right, no. but she she rose to the occasion. It's one of the more like main points of like 2018 and 2019, and she was very like important in the years that I started watching. I I got sick of her by the end, but it was just because like ah, oh, Hunter saved Mel by killing Ray in self defense, but then he kind of became like a fucking gun pervert, and he started getting horny about killing someone. And it's like this. This wasn't who Steve is either. Like Steve killed killed Saskia by accident. He wasn't like a fucking like. Oh yeah, yeah, I'm fucking killed. Yeah, but like Hunter just became this like weird like twisted fucker. Then he got axed anyways and got killed. So <laughs> yeah, it was just 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 a bad time for everyone really. Uh, but Mel was always good. Um, and I'll give her all the credit. Um. Arriving as local vicar's sister, girl next door, Mel became massively popular as viewers as she crossed paths with Dan, Phil, and Steve. Her millennium eve wedding to Ian remains iconic. Discovering that he lied about her daughter's Lucy cancer's uh, her daughter Lucy's cancer diagnosis, Mel walked on Ian just moments after nuptials with the killer with the killer line. Well, guess what, Ian? I don't love you, and I never have done. <laughs> just after they get married. The show was huge at the time, and that was shown on a big screen to New Year crowds in London's Trafalgar Square. Mel caused all kinds of mayhem during a recent return, and deserved much better than being run over by a truck. Yeah, probably deserved a much more interesting exit. 
just this like really shit feud with Sharon, where Sharon's not at her best and Mel's not at her best. One of my favorite Mel scenes is when she like tricks Phil, like she she tricks Phil and like gets him to kiss her, and then it's like I've got to fucking take you, little bitch, because obviously Phil tricked her in like fucking twenty years ago, and then the 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 turn were tabled, the tables were turned. Um, I was an intentional weird dumb version of that phrase. It wasn't a fuck up. I swear, it was just shitly done. Um, but yes, I. Fair enough. I'll probably still not as high as, you know, I'd prefer Pauline, I prefer fucking Stacey, Roddy, Frank, you know, but we are getting to the good bits, and let's be honest, there's a lot of recency bias with this list, so. All right, number 12, Mick Carter. Oh, he had to be on the list, he had to fucking be on the list, but where was he going to be on the list? Hey, oh, hold on, hold on, hold on, I got it, dude. It's fucking Danny Dyer. Let's go. Mick Carter is on the list. <laughs> I don't hate it. I, I don't. don't. I, I just I just have to play it up. It's always fun to, to shit on Mick Carter because, yes, the exit was contrived. It was. But he was at the, fore, at the forefront of the show for the last, what, like, nine, ten years? I'm like, yeah, it got tiresome at the end because they kind of lost what they wanted to do and the writing was a bit dodgy and they didn't really... They kind of went, ah, shit, I guess we got to do this Janine and Mick and Linda trio stuff. And the recency bias has definitely killed a lot of the love. Everybody kind of went, ah, Jesus. Um, But it was... uh, You know, he had some of the more famous scenes. He had the scene where Johnny came out as gay and then Linda was horrified. Um, and, like, fucking, you obviously added the abuse by Frankie's mum, where he learned he was abused as a kid, and that's kind of, like, why he's now has a lot of issues, and, like, he, like, blocked it all out, um, and Katie, there we are, Katie Lewis, um, he was just involved in a lot of really good stuff on the show. And I'll respect it, all right? Like, everybody kind of says, like, oh, I fucking hate Mick. But the second he comes back, he's got, yeah, he's fucking black boys. You know, like, that's going to happen. Um, so, yeah, no, I'll take I, I it. Just, I just, I know, I understand this come out 2020, right? But I just love when Danny Dyer left last year. He said, yeah, yeah, I'm going to be on a new TV show on Channel 5. TV show fucking bombed. Yeah, I don't mind these dinners, actually. It was an all right job. <laughs> like, that, Danny. Danny. That is quite literally like when you leave your ex and then you go to a di- you get a new girlfriend, then she dumps you, and then you fucking go back to her. Uh, it just sound like something fucking slammed. Hold on, why, why, why is the door open? I'm not here. Um, I'll just wait, like, fucking... That nah, should be good. Probably next door. Um, yeah, it's just Mick. Yeah, he went. I'm gonna do so much better. He's gonna come back in 2025. <laughs> He's gonna come back in 2025 once the money dries up. Um, yeah. The comment says Mick Cart was rocking waistcoats long before Gareth Southgate, Southgate made him popular. Securing his masculinity, Mick was also partial to strutting around in, Wind- in Linda's pink bathrobe. He was. He did love that one. On first appearances, the Vic's current gaffer is your typical geezer, keeping Cockney rhyming slang alive and quick to banter, but you look a little deeper and he'll surprise you. When the Carter's then youngest son, Johnny, came out as gay, Mix, uh, Linda was horrified. Uh, however, in one of the show's most genuine moving scenes, Mick reassured his son that he would always be proud of him, and in typical Mick's uh, style, he then lightened the mood by quipping, so you're the one we should have called Nancy. It was a great line. Um, <laughs> and... Ah, I love it. It's just, he was just really good for such a long time, but you could tell by the end he was fucking sick of it. Like, I will, I like, as much as I hate Mick Carter, it's just because I don't find him a nine. It's just, he's been there for too long. Like, he's the Whitney, basically, the male yes. Whitney. You've had too much of Danny, and they keep going. Hold oh, on, let's get this. They keep going. You, I know you had enough of Danny, but here's more Danny. Here's more. Here's more. Here's more. Like, no, get get the fucking egg away from me. 
no, no, come on, you want more Danny? He's like, no, please, please. Yeah, he he was used in a very prominent role for a lot of years, and by the end, and we, as the writing got worse, they started to fuck up the things like, like Linda and Mick never needed to split up, really. Um, that should be remembered as one of the biggest like misplays and like just bad ideas of the writing team. Um, but you know, Mick was just like Mick was Danny Dyer if he was a nice person. <laughs> Do you think um, Danny Dyer is a wanker in real life? Oh, he's absolute. He could be an absolute prick, right? Oh, I'd love fucking. I'd love fucking if. I'd love if we met Danny Dyer. If watching Walford met Danny, watching Walford, yeah, we're watching Walford. If watching Walford met Danny Dyer, could you imagine us two going up to him, going, "Hey, Danny, who's the man? You are Danny. Way. You fucking high five. And he goes, "Bosh, fuck you. Don't like you. <laughs> he just <laughs> like I do love Nick Carter though, but I fucking hate Danny Dyer. Of course, my favorite, like it's only a Danny Dyer thing. My favorite thing is that when he was on the Keith Lemon show. And it's like, yeah, I've got a big bollocks. I've got a big bollocks. Every single time. Yeah, I know. And then the fucking he bits it out. Uh, but yeah. So yeah, that's my thoughts on Danny Dyer. Uh, Nick Carter is an all right character. He will be back in 2025. Maybe. Maybe 2026 at the latest. But he'll, he'll be back. For sure. And he'll get the fucking hero's welcome as well. So. Fine by me. Um. And number 11, the final one of this second part of the list, is Linda. Linda Carter, which now I'd appreciate it a bit more. But back then, fuck that. Fucking hell. I hated Linda the entire time. Um, I'll just I'll read the little comment and we can go into it. Um, Linda's love of pink, Princess Diana and Flamingos immediately brightened up the Queen Vic when she took over the reins of childhood sweetheart Mick. The marriage was rock solid when, and she was devoted to her kids. She's since endured rape, cancer, and all a manner of family drama, which has only cemented her status as classic East Ender survivor. Linda always paints a smile on for the punters, no matter how uptight she's feeling. Her recent descent into alcoholism has been believable, dramatic, and challenging to watch. No! <laughs> Sorry, lads. Uh, Linda, before this current year, where they had to change the direction was miserable. Um, she was a massive fucking cow. Um, and they really just wanted to turn her into Angie. And she never, was never like rise to that level. Um, and uh, no, I, Linda deserves it to be up here now. But back then, not at all. The alcoholism was fucking miserable the whole time. And I'd argue that a lot of people only really start to turn around her in the last year or so because she's now actually been able to stand on her own two feet and she's not being overshadowed by literally everybody else. Like, she became prominent at the time where a lot of the favourites got a lot less screen time. Yeah. Um, I agree with that. I don't have much to say on Linda Carter because I've only watched the past year of her. I've watched more Mick Carter than I've Linda Carter. I know, shoot me, I know. Wow, wow. So edgy. Her this um, year, I will respect it. Yeah, yeah, it. yeah. She's like, been a whole, lot, a whole lot more likeable this year than she has over the last 10. Oh, fair play. Fair play. Not many people can do that. Um, But yeah, let's, let's, let's get into the top 10. 